Good day, everybody. Welcome back to another Rosh Reviews. And today, you join me in the all new Daihatsu High Jet. And guys, here in Australia, you are going to start seeing a lot more of these. Mark my words. They're coming in boatloads now, and they really are starting to get a following because this particular one, it is a 4x4, so you know it's got the three cylinder 660cc engine. It's a CVT automatic, and again, four wheel drive. We've got diff lockers here. Man, these are cool. They really are. Now, firstly, guys, I want to say a huge thanks to Nextride for loaning me this. Uh, it is for sale. I believe this one might have already sold, but there are a few more coming to the lot very soon. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure you check them out. I, uh, I do get a lot of cars from there all the time, and uh, they've always got something fun to look at. So, yeah, after a cool car, check them out down below. And look, guys, when you are parked up at the lights here, uh, you actually don't sit that low. Um, I'd actually say you're quite comparable to like an SUV almost. You do sit kind of high up in this, surprisingly, judging how small these wheels are. Uh, but yeah, you don't feel like you are in a traditional K car because obviously this is a truck, but it's not too bad the ride height. Now look, Daihatsu's parent company is actually Toyota. So these things are built pretty damn well. And considering how much you're gonna pay for one of these things, uh, you can really do a lot with this thing because it is a K truck, you know, it's a micro car. So in Japan, they have a K class of vehicle where they cannot exceed 660 cc's of engine displacement, basically. So you have to have quite a small engine. This makes a whopping 48 kilowatts and I believe about 92 newton meters. And uh, it does have auto start stop. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, and, and the reason why Japan has that obviously is because their urban cities are just so jam packed. They wanna have small vehicles. Uh, they want stuff that is obviously more economically friendly, cheaper to build, and they're more replaceable. You know, you can upgrade these things a lot when you're in Japan because they're cheap to buy. Price in Japan, if we translate it to Australian dollars, I believe you're looking around that like 24 grand mark, uh, which is cheap. And obviously look, the prices here in Australia, they are gonna be a little bit more expensive because you gotta comply these things, you gotta bring them on a boat, uh, buy them in Japan and ship them over basically. So. The average going rate seems to be on car sales for a new one like this. You're looking around that 30-ish thousand dollar mark. And um, you know, look again, considering you've got that tray back there, it's a four wheel drive. Uh, these things could really work potentially for a lot of tradies. And it is a fun, quirky vehicle. You know, it's cool to rep your business in. You know, people will recognize you. You know, if you had a wrap on this thing, uh, I think a lot of people would, you know, spot you. It would be good for business. Inside, you've got all the creatures of comfort now, which before in K cars you wouldn't get. So this has actually got push button start. Uh, it does have reverse sensors. There's no reverse camera, which I thought it would have had, but it's got reverse sensors. Obviously, I talked about the auto start stop. I turn it off, I don't like that. Power windows, power locks. It is keyless entry as well. It's pretty good, you know, we've got a little infotainment system here. It's touch screen. Uh, I'm not sure if that's aftermarket, but obviously, Judging by the look of it, you definitely could put something in there if you wanted it to be a little bit nicer. Uh, your center tachometer, you know, there's no revs here. It is just only your speedo. That's fine. Now, this is the jumbo cab, so we do have a little bit of a section behind the seats where, you know, we can chuck some bags. Uh, there's just a little bit more room in here. The headroom is increased as well in the jumbo cab, so you actually have a shelf right above the sun visors as well, which you can utilize, put some stuff in. And that helps because these things again are tiny and you need as much space in here as possible. So, you know, you've even got some partial shelves on the dash above your speedo. You've even got another little shelf, which is handy to just put stuff if you need to. We've got three cup holders in here, which that is impressive. So, you know, we've got one up here by the steering wheel, two down where you would typically think there's one uh, you know, typical handbrake, which I love to see. Basic AC controls. It's not bad. And look, high jet translated roughly in Japanese is midget. Uh, so <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to offend any small people out there, but this is a little small truck. And funny enough, Daihatsu actually has a vehicle called the Daihatsu Midget, which I am hoping to review soon. 
uh, and they are quite quirky and funny as well. Now guys, if you are enjoying this type of content, please make sure you hit that big red subscribe button, click the bell notifications so you do get updated on all my weekly uploads and uh, more weird quirky vehicles like this. You know, I'm usually in uh, something a little bit more powerful, but <laughs> when you get the chance to get in these weird JDM things, you gotta say yes. Now just having a quick walk around on this high jet, guys, because it is in this cool green color. Uh, look, the wheels, I believe these are like 12 inch wheels by 145, uh, yeah, like <laughs> 145 by 12 is, yeah, you think 245 small, um, yeah, look at that. But we've got the tray in the back here and you know, look, we can just, it all just folds down, you know what I mean? Uh, you can do the sides as well. It's, you know, it's just exactly what you'd expect. Uh, very easy, we've got a spare tire there. I believe it does fit under the vehicle. Um, it's just been placed there for convenience. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool looking rig, you gotta admit, you know? And I think there's enough room there, you can fit a dirt bike or something. What do you think? Leave a comment. What do you think of the design of it? What do you think the look? Uh, would you consider getting one of these things, guys? And uh, while we're here, look, we're gonna go um, for a bit of a drive down on some off-roady stuff. See if it can handle the sand. Look, the biggest thing with this car is it does need to be lifted up a little bit and it needs some bigger tires. If you do those little mods, I think this would really be something quite crazy. Um, so, you know, here we are just on some soft stuff. Just keep the power down. <laughs> it does move, it does go. It's just, uh, you've got to keep the power down. The thing is, right, with this thing, it, it, it has obviously four wheel drives, got the diff lockers, so you're good there. But these are only 145s, the 12 inch. And when you've got really sandy ruts like that, you just don't want to follow everyone else's trail because this thing will just bottom out. And uh, that is how potentially you could get beached in this. But uh, if as long as you kind of stay in the middle of the trail to the right side or left side, uh, you know, this thing, it just seems to pull through. Again, being light, uh, you know, even if you go on the harder stuff, it's obviously a lot easier for this thing. You know, you can be in two wheel drive and do this. Um, but that's why I think for a farm vehicle, you know, as a fun, you know, if you got a big property, man, this thing would be a blast. And uh, man, it, it, it'll tackle more than you think. Yep, leaf sprung in the rear guys, so it, it can get pretty bouncy in here. If you're on some really rough stuff, you're gonna wanna take it a little bit easy, but uh, yeah, again, just keep the power down. It just does seem to do pretty well pulling itself through. Again, I think just needs those, uh, a little bit of a lift kit, upgrade the tire, you know, tires on this. This would be so much fun. Alrighty guys, we are just pulling up on this back road and we are going to attempt the 0 to 100. Uh, last time I was in one of these K-Car trucks, uh, yeah, it was the slowest vehicle I'd ever tested, so let's find out. Come on, come on. Nope, I don't think I actually hit a hundred there. <laughs> and I used the entire road. What? And let's go. Listen to that thing scream. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, we're not even at 90 yet. 90. Ninety-five. Ninety-six. Ninety-eight. What is going on? This thing won't even hit a hundred. This legitimately could not hit a hundred. Am I doing this wrong? Is this a sport mode? We did a quarter mile in 23.64 seconds uh so yeah you guys can see this is a legitimately big road uh and look we could not get to uh we couldn't do it we got zero to 60 kilometers per hour 10 seconds flat i was really expecting this thing to be able to do 110 120 like really pushing it but that to me, guys, I done a half mile. Like I actually did a half mile, 39 seconds flat. I'm telling you, this isn't. This was a big road. This road is super long, and we, this is officially the slowest car I've ever reviewed. It takes the Suzuki Carry to number two, and uh, this is number one the slowest vehicle ever on the channel. It can't even get to 100 and that actually blows my mind i thought this would do it quicker i was expecting like you know 16 17 seconds uh yeah wow i guess highway driving guys uh you are always going to be in the slow lane but again guys look what is this thing designed for? You know, it is designed for high urban areas where, you know, you're not going to be going plus 80 kilometers an hour all that often. And if that fits your need, uh, then this thing is a really cool option. Because again, if you do got to go on the freeway all the time, you want to be going 100 for long distances, I honestly just can't recommend this thing because it just, it doesn't even do 100. Like it does 98 Ks an hour is like, it's like limited to 98 Ks an hour. Um, yeah, that is unfortunate, but I think as long as you're not going to be doing a lot of highway driving, you still can get away with this thing. And it's cheap to run, it's cheap to maintain, uh, you know, again, Toyota subsidiary, so it's pretty well built, this thing. And it turns a lot of heads, and it's, it's fun. It's a quirky vehicle that won't cost you a huge amount, and, uh, you know, this thing will be, again, quite reliable. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyways, hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing if you're new here, and uh, we will see you on that next video.